So our topic this morning is Handling Obstacles in Miracle Making. And I will admit that when I came up with this topic, I got all excited thinking that it was going to be talking about what's going on in the world. And that world right now is a big old obstacle. And I got all fired up about that. And then as I actually read the chapter in our book, that we are using as inspiration this during this time, Shortcut to a Miracle by Michael Rand and Elizabeth Rand Arrett. They have a topic about obstacles and guess what? It's us, it's about us, we're the obstacle. So I'm like, oh, so yeah, gotta face it, right? So first of all, uh, one of our quantum physicists, who is one of the many quantum physicists who discovered these laws of nature that have completely set everything on its end, including Einstein. He didn't like these things. But in discovering these deeper laws of, of nature, of science, of, of the way things are really working, what they discovered was rather than it being a clockwork universe where somebody at the very beginning of a whole domino um, train of tiles clicked the finger and set them all going and so that everything is just now unwinding itself and is pretty deterministic, the quantum physicists who have been in action for at least a hundred years have discovered that the universe is not like that at all. In fact, it's a place of infinite potential and everything is moving and everything is changing relationship with everything else. And we are somehow unseeingly affecting what is happening in this universe. So the quote is from Erwin Schrodinger. You may have noticed his name with regard to whether a cat is alive or dead inside a box. Google it if you care. And what he wrote is this, I, I in the widest meaning of the word, that is to say every conscious mind that has ever said or felt I, am the person, if any, who controls the motions of the atoms according to the laws of nature. This is not a religious philosopher. This is a scientist. And so the scientists have recognized that somehow we are not observers of this universe and everything that is going on. We are participants. And so in taking this information, we have been experimenting. We have become scientists in experimenting with our participation in our worlds to see miracles happen, to see changes happen in our world, in our lives, in, in the things around us, in the atoms around us. So it's been very, very exciting. I hope for you, it certainly has been for me. And we are experimenters and our miracle making attitude is to give it a try and not to add a whole lot of emotional baggage to whether it's means that God loves us or not, or whether we're, it's meant to be that we're miserable our whole lives or that we're meant to suffer without putting all that emotional baggage, just testing with our observation and our thinking of what's going on in our world, by changing that, will that change the consequences? Will that change what actually happens? So in our miracle making, we sometimes come across an obstacle. And in reading their book, I realize that their description of all the different kinds of obstacles that can come up, all being ourselves, they do seem to be all areas where we are stuck emotionally. 
or mentally and emotionally stuck about something in our past. Now, our universe is actually one of flow. And we have known for since scientists began that things are moving. I think once that we got into the realization that the world is round, it was realized that not only is it round, but it's moving. And even though we think we are sitting still, we're moving. And as scientists and, and doctors have researched deeper and deeper, we've discovered that everything is moving, that the atoms are moving inside our bodies, that our cells are moving, that the electrons inside the atoms are jumping from orbit to orbit with no explanation, seemingly. And the heavens are alive. And everything that is moving is changing its relationship to everything else. And so getting stuck for a human being is getting stuck to the position that we were in, but it's gone. Call it the past. But everything in the universe has changed in relationship to you, to me. Every single moment, everything is moving. And so for miracles to happen in our lives or for us to be able to use the laws of nature in our favor, we have got to be fluid too. We are moving, whether we're aware of it or not, but we want to stay in that attitude with that mental and emotional attitude of being in the now. That is how we are part of the flow of the universe. We're flowing whether we like it or not, but when we're stuck with the past or when we're stuck with the way that we really like things to be, Sometimes the, the flow of the universe, right, feels a little bit more like being dragged along. And, you know, it used, it used to be my favorite thing to say that it, the universe drags me along kicking and screaming. So suffering is getting dragged along kicking and screaming. And we don't have to be dragged along, but we got to go. We have to go. I began speaking at 1030 a.m., my clock says it's 1039. It's a whole different experience right now. Everything has moved on. And if I were still giving the introduction, welcome, hello, all of you, you would all be, you know, lady, move on already. And some of you have said that, you know, go on with it already. So we've got to stay present. We've got to stay in the now. We've got to stay in the now, not because our watch says so, not because... The sun rises and the sun falls and it's another day, but because life is movement and we are living and we must move. And that movement is not just physical, it's mental and emotional. Right now, each one of you, you're thinking a thought in this now moment, but the, whatever thought you're thinking affects the next thought you think. And that thought affects the next but we get stuck, right? When we keep thinking the same thought over and over again. So two of the emotions that best represent staying stuck in the past are guilt and resentment. Guilt is about something we did in the past that we just cannot let go of. And we have to, we have to move on. And resentment is something probably that somebody else did in the past and they've moved on and we're still rehashing it and reliving it. And so we need to find a way to let go of guilt and resentment so that we can be present and move forward in a greater way. So let me deal with guilt because both of them, guilt and resentment, have the same activities that can move us forward. But guilt's also, there's another little way that we can handle it um, that I think is special for guilt. So I will uh, make up a story of something that I did. And I'm not going to share horrible stuff about me because this is live and who knows who's all watching it. And who knows, perhaps the one that I've done it to is watching. So I'm not going to get into 
you know, any deep, heavy stuff. But let's just say I committed a minor infraction and I'm, I'm feeling bad about it. And so one of my minor infractions, I hope it's minor, is I don't keep in touch with people very well. And so I received a beautiful card from a good friend that I hadn't spoken to in a long time. And uh, I just appreciated receiving the card so much. And in the card was the suggestion, let's talk. And I haven't answered it yet. So one way of dealing with any kind of guilt is to imagine yourselves, yourself as with your two different sides of you. There's the side of you, I'm putting that, per, let's see, the side of you that feels guilty. That's over here, okay? And the side of you that knows better, that loving, compassionate side of you. And so what you can simply do is have a conversation with that loving side of you. So I'll give a little example. I'm guilty. I feel really bad. My friend, who I love dearly, asked me to contact her so we could have a conversation, and I haven't done it, and it's been, I think it's been months, and I feel horrible, and I don't know what to do, and I don't know what to say to her, and it, 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 I just can't let it go. Bye, son. Karen, get over it. No, that's a, just kidding. <laughs> no, Karen, everybody makes mistakes. And we know that you've been very busy and that you've got a lot on your mind. But you've got love in your heart for your friend. And that love in your heart for your friend is also in your friend's heart. You two love each other. She wants to hear from you. She will accept your apology for your delay. She might not understand, and she doesn't have to accept your apology, but she probably will. But the thing is, is what you need to do, because you haven't done it yet, is you need to express your love for her to her. But I'm embarrassed, and I'm going to feel like a jerk. And maybe she's forgotten all about it. Maybe I, I can get away with it, right? Yes, you can be embarrassed, that's all right, and you can do it anyway. And maybe she has forgotten all about it, and maybe she has moved on, but you haven't. You need to do something about this, and I think you know what this is that you need to do. I need to call her, huh? I need help calling her. I'm not enough. I feel horrible, whatever. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, first of all, we'll call on divine love to speak through you and you'll be able to call her and just realize all you are doing, have to do is connect with the love in your heart and make the call and just express your heart. And then you can move on. And however, she responds is how she responds. If she wants you to make amends, you can make amends. You can work with it. But you need to do this for your sake. And you will release that guilt after, after you make that call. And I will do a very special affirmative prayer for you to support you in making that call. Okay? Okay. If you do that prayer... I promise I will make that call. Okay, example. So it was simple, it was easy, it was a little thing, but oh my gosh, you can imagine the kind of conversation that you can have with yourself. I mean, you could be bursting out crying, but that loving side of you, you might call it the infinite love within you, is knows what to say. It's that good friend that you are with any of your good friends who come to you with a, a problem where they're feeling guilt. Understanding, loving, supportive, and able to do a little prayer for you. So that's guilt. Resentment, that's somebody else did it to us. And we need to practice forgiveness. So I dealt with that little bit 
that little practice of guilt first because with uh, forgiveness, you can also do forgiveness work for yourself as well as for others. So forgiveness work might be necessary, especially when what you did wrong is so far in the past or the person has moved on and they're no longer even on the planet uh, or they're refusing to speak to you in some way, that self-forgiveness work is absolutely necessary and it's there to set you free. Self-forgiveness work can easily be done. And a couple of weeks ago, actually it might've been last week, I might've given you the praising prayer. I praise you so-and-so, I raise you so-and-so in the name of love. You can use that with your own name. I praise you, Karen. I raise you, Karen, in the name of love. And you can say that over and over and over again until you feel the grace of sweet release and let that guilt go away. Edwin Gaines, Reverend Edwin Gaines, who is the queen of forgiveness, and she has a book newly published virtually out there. I think it's out there as an e-reader on forgiveness. You can Google it. She says and recommends doing forgiveness work every single day. Again, the forgiveness work is to keep you in the present and not carrying around all that baggage from the past. In our book, Shortcut to the Miracle, here's the benefits of forgiveness that they say. Forgiveness is the simple act of letting go of the painful past so we can move forward. It is allowing ourselves to open to the richness and beauty of today rather than the pain of yesterday. It is letting go of being a victim. It is letting go of our victim story. Now, we might not want to do that, but in making a miracle, victims don't make miracles. Victims have things done to them. Only a miracle maker who is not a victim, but who's taking responsibility for their lives and moving forward is able to do that. So you have to be a today person making today's decisions to move forward. And the important thing about today's decision is your decision that you make right now has more authority and power than the sum total of decisions you've made throughout your entire life. This moment of now is the moment where infinite potential, those electrons could be anywhere in the room, the cat could be alive or dead, who knows what's going on, everything's swirling around in this universe, it's all flowing, and in this moment, you change the course of your experience of life, and your decision this moment has more power than all the things that have been done to you in the past and all the things that decisions and things that you've done in the past this moment. And so getting current with yourself is absolutely critical if you want to be a miracle maker. So forgiveness is also recognizing that what happened days, weeks, months, or even years ago is less important than what is happening today and tomorrow. It is releasing the pent up energy of the past. And if you've ever let something go, you feel that energy moving out of your body. You feel the relaxation. You feel, oh, such a relief. Oh, I love that show, Mom. And uh, I'll admit I'm like only in the second season, but in the very first season of it, the mom, Allison, um, well, whatever her name is, Allison, she was uh, sharing with her daughter some of the secrets that she had held with her. And so finally she mentions the name of her daughter's father and that he is alive. And the daughter is freaking out because she had been told that her father is dead. And she just learns that her father is still alive. Whereas Allison is Jenny. Allison Jenny is going, oh, 
what a relief to finally get that off my back. Oh, my God, I can't tell you how good I feel while her daughter is freaking out. Okay. Well, anyway, that's not, you know, what you want to do. But yeah, you feel that release of the energy. So it's an opening to the song of our authentic self. It is making way for greater love in our lives at every level. Anyone who has gone through a divorce, you know, or dated someone who has been separated or had a bad breakup or something like that, the last thing you want is a walking wounded, someone who is rehashing all the problems and, and things that the other one did to them, whatever. No. So opening your up to new and being present, right? Much better for your love life. And it is opening to a greater flow of infinite intelligence, divine power, and unconditional love by our own means. It is making way for the miracle. So forgiveness is necessary. It is critical for ourselves to stay present and to be able to make or a new observation of our lives. So I've been, I live in New Jersey and our world right now is beginning to open up. And in that opening up, we've heard various people say, I want to return to the way things were. I want to go back to normal. And so what we want to realize is that for a miracle-making participant in this universe, everything in our world has moved on. Everything has changed. If we hadn't been in isolation, we would be changing along with it. We might not have noticed that a building got raised. We might not notice that um, a particular store went out of business. We, we but they would have been happening as we were moving around in the world. And so as we re-enter, we want to realize whether everything looks the same or not, it's different. We've changed, number one. We've changed. So when we come out of our cocoon, it is a brand new world. And we want to be free to fully enjoy that world that we are in to fully enjoy the experience of being present. In other words, we want to be expecting things to be different, expecting them to be different because they are and because we have that ability to participate in what that difference looks like, we want to use our conscious mind to think, I expect things to be better. Now I know what everybody else is saying, blah, 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 blah. But realize that you can be a victim of what everyone else is saying, or you can be participating, actively participating in your world and deciding what it is that you expect to see when you emerge from your world. I expect to see positive changes. Okay, so I'm saying this now, knowing I need to listen, okay? So we'll practice together. I know that everything has changed and these few months, whatever it has been, I have taken a lot of time looking at myself, looking at my life, praying in silence, reflecting and observing and I choose to be current with the universal flow of life. And I am current because the love that is present in my heart is freely flowing. It's not stopped up with guilt or resentment. I've been doing my spiritual work, a forgiveness work, and I am changed because of that, right? So are you. We are freer, we are lighter, we have a right to expect better things as we emerge. And those better things may not be what other people are doing and the different 
guidelines and rules and laws that might be coming out of all this, but it definitely will be you. You will be improved. You will be looking for the good, the new, the beautiful, the positive, and expect to see it. There had been this house that I had been watching for years, D uh, a deserted, empty, decaying house along Route 27. And I just always wondered, what is going on with that house? It just seemed like there was all sorts of decaying, rotting stuff inside, but, but something about it made me think, I think people have been in there and who knows all what's going on. Yuck, 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 yuck. Anyway. During this whole period of isolation, as I have sat in the parking lot looking at this particular house, because I like to go to this one little place, support them in getting my breakfast takeout to go, and I eat it in my car, have my little coffee, and I'm looking at this house. And while I've been observing it these two months, they have started gutting it and cleaning it up and repairing it and weed whacking the weeds and it's getting transformed. And so that always was there as potential. And I and you, we get to witness the transformation into the better. And I cannot wait to see what it will become, but it will be wonderful. And that's what we want to know about our lives, is that as we emerge, current present people, not try, not whining and complaining because things have changed. I don't know how many of my favorite stores have made announcements that they're filing bankruptcy. One of my favorite stores has said they're closing for business. I'm like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe things will be changed, whatever. But that's the old. It's the past. And looking for it is not being a today person who is making miracles today. And so what we want to do as we go out there fresh, instead of looking for the old and looking for the new and whining because it's not the same and everything is different and yada, 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 to be looking for the new in a positive, enthusiastic way, positive anticipation, something, everything is new. What good can we find? So that positive expectation is there for us to search and to look for and to expect and to live our lives as if we did move. You all probably have had the experience of physically relocating. It's very disruptive, right? Because you have to find all new stores. You have to figure out how to drive your car. You have to, you know, you got new neighbors who know what they're like. All this stuff that we have to adjust to because it's all new for us. And so as we emerge out of this isolation experience, what we want to do is assume it's all different. Assume we're going to have to find a new way to get to and from where we are to where we want to go. Assume that we're going to have to find a new place to get our coffee. Assume that everybody has moved and changed and moved on and, and adapt to what is new and to look for that new good that is there for us and is able for us to experience if we are alive, alert, and fully living in that now moment. Emma Curtis Hopkins says, and we're going to say as we get out there into the world, this too is good. This too is God. This too is for me. And I demand to see the blessings in it. And so carrying along the way things used to be is going to make us miserable and we are going to suffer and be in a lot of pain. And we're going to be filled with loss and with grieving and build up resentment and anger at those who changed. And what we want to do is move forward free and clear emotionally and mentally, certainly spiritually, so that we're able to be with the universe, this universe 
that has moved on, to be with that universe in the now moment and, and say, wow, it's a whole new world. I wonder what's here for me. And I wonder how I might respond. I've changed so much. So handling obstacles in miracle making turns out to be all about us holding on to the past. Physically, as in, you know, I can't let go of this pen. This pen is the best. I cannot let it go. Let it go. It's out of ink. Or emotionally, they've done it to me. I can't stand it. The pain, the pain, the pain. Ah, do that forgiveness work to have that grace of pure, perfect love descend and just give you that breathing space so that you can open your heart and love again and more. And with all the new people who will be coming into your life and to let go of your mental story, that rehashing of the way it used to be and, uh, Get rid of all of your always and never thinking. I always do this. I never do that. Or you always do this. You never do that. Get rid of that always never thinking and be like an electron somewhere in the room. Who knows where it is? You and I are brand new. Who knows what we might do? because it's a whole new world and we are changed people and the world has changed and let's wake up like Bill Murray and Groundhog Day plus one and move forward and discover this whole new world that we have participated in co-creating. So let me do an affirmative prayer right now, a spiritual mind treatment to help us with all of this. So if you've got a thing you're feeling guilty about, um, why don't you bring this into your conscious awareness and this word that I speak will support you and me in releasing that guilt and doing what we need to do, if anything, but mostly just letting it go so that we can be present. So this word is being spoken for each one. There is only one life, this life that this universe is, and it is forever changing. And yet, Something that is, call it God, call it first cause, call it the, the essence itself, never changes. Life, love, intelligence, power, peace, beauty, harmony, joy. These qualities are that essential something that are always present. And they are forever changing how they express themselves in this universe. And so each one is these qualities of life, love, intelligence, power, peace, beauty, harmony, and joy. And each one is up to date and fully expressing these divine qualities in a new and wonderful way, something that has never been seen so far. And wherever anyone is feeling attached or stuck in the past, or wherever one is feeling guilt or resentment about something from the past, and all old stories, mind chatter that just goes around and around that anyone is ready to release, all of this is now infused with the spirit of love moving into every nook and cranny of each one's heart and mind and bringing its gift of sweet release so that each one knows that they are free, free to be here now, fully alive, fully alert, fully living this wonderful gift of life that is being given now. And each one is now empowered to know that today is the day of power. That today 
Each one has that ability to make a new decision. And this new choice is directing the flow of the universe to create something new, wonderful, and miraculously good in each one's world. And so this is the day that love is making. Using each one and each one actively participating in co-creating a world that is one that is loved completely. Each one is fully present, fully alert, fully alive today. A fresh start, brand new, a brand new world to meet and to greet and to get to know in a happy, healthy, wonderful way. And this is the truth for each one. I am so grateful it is so. I release this word to God's loving law. So grateful it is done and it is done. And so it is. And that's the way it is. So thank you for watching and go out there into that world as you are divinely guided to do and enjoy all the good that is there for you right here, right now.